Okay, so we're going to do a quick review on Newton's first law of motion, also called the law of inertia. Now, again, this is review for you unless I put this in like a physics one type video. It might be your first time hearing it. But in classical mechanics, I'm sure you've heard it before. And, you know, if not or you forgot, this is a good way to review. So in words, it says... Um, an object will not change its motion unless acted on by an unbalanced force or a net force. If it's at rest, it stays at rest. If it's in motion, it stays in motion. Um, so essentially what we're talking about is it'll go in the same, it'll go at the same speed and direction forever if there's no force acting on it. So if you're going this way at some speed and there's no force, you're going to continue going that way at that speed. And I want to look at a, a few examples to maybe give us a, a better idea. And we'll actually talk about this real quick. Um, inertia we talked about before. Uh, hopefully you remember. Basically inertia is the tendency of an object to stay at the, at the, um, at the speed and direction it's going. At the velocity and direction it's going. So this big block has more inertia than this smaller block. Now let's say um, you have an object in space and let's say it's moving at this velocity. Does there need to be a force acting on the object for this to be true? The answer is no, there doesn't. The fact that it's going at the same speed means there's no force. Okay, so you could have, let's say, you know, you have a planet, and then way away far from the gravitational pull, you have this object. Now it could be at rest, or it could be at motion. And if it's in motion, it's gonna go at that same speed and that same direction until some force acts on it. Um, if you know the Voyager, the interstellar, um, satellite that NASA sent out, they used a lot of different things, but it's going at a certain speed and it's going to continue going at that certain speed because there's not a force telling it to slow down. So because of that, it's going to continue to go. Now, an important thing to know and to look at and make sure we understand on top of the fact that you don't need force to move, you need a force to change how you're moving. So that's this part. That's this part. You don't need a force to move. You need a force to change how you're moving. It's also important that we understand what is meant by unbalanced forces. So let's, let's look at a table. Let's say I have a table and I have a ball right here. Now the ball is not going to just move, move by itself unless I push it or something. If it's just sitting there... You know, it's not going to bounce up and down on the table. It's not going to roll around. It's just going to stay there. And that kind of matches what we see every single day. Does that mean there's no forces acting on it? No. There is a normal force. And there is a weight force from exerted by the earth onto the ball. But here's the important thing. In this particular case... The normal force is the same as the weight force. These are equal. So that means we have balanced forces. We don't have any net force. So one way to think of it is no net force. And because there's no net force, that ball's just going to stay there forever until something moves it. Um, so let's also look a little bit here. If an object's at rest, it'll stay at rest. That makes sense in everyday life. If you put a ball on the table, for example, like we did over here, it's not going to just jump up and down by itself, right? You have to do something to it. The part that kind of tripped people up a little bit is an object in motion will remain at motion at the same velocity. And I want to add direction, right? Now, that's a little weirder because if you were to roll a ball on the table, let's say you were to roll it, you rolled it this way, eventually that ball is going to come to a stop. Well, it's supposed to go at the same 
velocity, right? Well, only if there's unbalanced forces. So when you roll a ball, there's friction on the table that slows it down. Now, if you're able to go into a good vacuum, like deep into outer space, and you did that, then it would keep moving, essentially, and forever. But because we have things like friction, it eventually does come to rest. Um, and inertia reference frames, I want to talk a little bit about inertia reference frames. Those are reference frames, and I'm going to talk probably more about this in the next video. I don't want to go too in-depth. But that's essentially where... Newton's first law holds up. That's, so for example, um, if you're going around a curve, let's say you're driving around, you'll see your stuff just kind of fly around in your car a little bit. It'll go towards the center. That's because there's centripetal acceleration. And that's center-seeking. So we'll talk a little bit more about inertia reference frames next, but I want to make sure at first we're all on the same page with Newton's first law of motion.